Hello, my name is Danny, and this is Brian, and we What's are- What's up? We are ninja sex party. <laughs> oh God, Ryan, you spit all over me. It's fine. It's fine. We're, we're keep going. Uh, keep okay. going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't so stop. Do not stop recording. We've got uh, we've got a new music video out for a new original song uh, called Orgy for One on the Ninja Sex Party YouTube channel. Ninja Sex Party YouTube channel. And it's very available for you to watch right now. We'll put the link in the description, and Ryan, you can put a link at the end card of this uh, video. Yeah. And won't that be the tits? It'll be the tits. So uh, please enjoy it. We worked super hard. Right, it's got a lot of fire and a lot of spandex, and we love you. See you soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you. Hey, I'm Dan. I'm also Dan. Dan. Well, hello there, little buckaroos and buckarettes, and uh, and welcome to a very special playthrough of Space Quest Two. Aw, fucking yeah! God, I love doing these. Um. It is Vohal's Revenge. Uh, you may remember Vohal as the guy who we killed in the first one. Did we kill him? I can't remember. No, we just blew up his, the Sarian ship. And he was like, he was all mad. He was all mad at me. Scott Murphy and Mark Crow, thank you always. Uh, you guys, um, you guys really made my childhood with, with these jams. <clears throat> as you will recall in our last chapter, you had just foiled the Sarian's fiendish plot to rule the galaxy by using the Star Generator as their weapon of destruction. You became a hero by saving countless lives and returning the Star Generator technology into safe hands. Life was beautiful. But heroes come and go, and people soon forget. Your celebrated herodom slowly fades, leaving you, once again, a janitor. The promotion to head janitor was no consolation, especially since you were the only member of the janitorial staff. Nor was the transfer to Orbital, Orbital Station 4. Sweating like a pork beast in a pressure suit while relocating space debris in zero gravity just wasn't your idea of a good time. Life sucks. Again. Oh man. Kinda heavy. Kinda true. Let's do it. Oh man, here we are. This is the Xenon Orbital Station 4. And uh, we're gonna... So, so triumphant. Yes! Welcome aboard XOS4. To log in for duty, please enter your name below. Up to 18 characters. <laughs> My name is Danny. Orbital Station 4 is one of many orbiting Xenon. Your home planet. It is... It is a transfer point for travelers seeking transportation to the various planets in the Irnon system. As we begin this chapter of our story, we find you, Danny, Ace Janitor, doing what you do best. Yup, I'm sweeping. I'm sweeping up this jam. And, uh, Space Quest 2. Well, you know what? Let's just get into the plot, and then I'll, uh, and then I'll tell you some stories. A beep emanates from your wristwatch. You release your grip on the broom. Whoops. <laughs> the broom floats away, never to be used again. That makes the third one this week. Wait till your boss finds out. Okay, so that broom is fucking gone. Um, look, watch. Ooh, I never did this before. Uh, press F10 when done. Push H button. Your horoscope for today. Keep up the good work. Today could bring that big promotion you think you deserve. Don't take any wooden buckazoids. Okay, so true. Uh, push C. Oh shit. Hmm. Danny, get in here on the double. You got a mess to clean up on the shuttle which just returned. One of the passengers got space sick on the way down. Besides, you should have been done out there an hour ago. Get a move on. Oh man, getting chewed out by my boss. This isn't why we play video games. Um, no. I want to look at my watch and press T. Ah, it's 11.26 and the temperature is negative 47 Celsius. Ah, oh, the joys of working in space. Okay. Um, so here's a fun little thing before we get going. If you just type cheat at the beginning, Boom! You win! <laughs> I fucking love that shit! Congratulations! You're the most bitchin' adventure game player in the world! 
No, make that the entire universe. While all those other silly saps struggle and toil through puzzle after puzzle, you have found a way to cheat yourself to the end. Is America great or what? I love that they put shit like that in here. Uh, yeah. By the way, as, as you can see, I got 255 points out of a possible 250. So, good for me. Okay, uh... Well, now I have to reload the whole thing. Gosh, gosh dang it. Alright, well, it's fine. It's fine, we're good. We're good. Everything's cool. Okay, doing this. My name's Danny. Hooray for me. Da-da-da. Okay, you kind of have to go through this thing with the broom again, but that's fine. We've got- we've got time. You know how- This is the- What is this, the fourth Space Quest game we've played on this show? So you know how this shit works. Lost my broom, whatever. <laughs> no broom, don't care! Long hair, don't care. That's my motto. So I've got an anti-grav boot so I can just walk up this wall and then up on the ceiling and pajams. I thought that was so cool when I was a kid. I love that shit. I'm whisked away to an airlock chamber. All right, stand by for decontamination. Apparently strobe lights decontaminate you, which is pretty sweet. Uh, let's see, change clothes. Ah, oh, there I am. Handsome, handsome lad that I am. Uh, let's take a look around the room. This is the airlock chamber. From here you can gain extra vehicular access. Spare suits hang on the back wall. Some lockers are mounted on the side wall. Well then, let's open the fucking locker. You'll need to get closer. How about this? Open locker. Look. Locker. You bravely peer into the locker and find a Cubics Rube puzzle and your athletic supporter. Well then, I'll take the puzzle. Okay. And take supporter. That's a jock strap, by the way, in case anyone at home is wondering. In fact, maybe I can take a look at it in my inventory. Uh, okay, so I still have um, the order form uh, from the last game. Whoops. Look, form. This is an order form you removed from a magazine for a free Labion Terror Beast mating whistle. It's ready to be mailed. Cool, so I've got that. Look, puzzle. The Cubics Rube puzzle has made you look stupid more than usual. <laughs> well, great. Look, supporter. This is, your, you, this is your athletic supporter. Without close inspection, you notice it to be well used. That means there's a lot of dick on it. What else was in my inventory? Oh, the dialect translator. That's what's from the first game. Sorry, not the mail order thing. Uh, look, translator. As you may remember, that's what I used to speak to the giant face thing with the red eyes. No, the purple eyes. I can't remember. The dialect translator is a small device. It is on. Okay, great. Um, and you know what? Let's save, because I might figure out a way to die real early. <laughs> Hi, I'm Danny, and this is fun. Okay. All right, and we're off. So Space Quest Two was a very important game to me when I was a little kid. Oh, look at, uh, look at these fellas. Oh, wait, there's my boss. Shit. <laughs> it's about time you got in here, Danny. Head for the shuttle bay on the double. I'm warning you, you're on your last leg around here, bud. One more screw up in your history. He then orders the transportation officer to send you directly to the shuttle bay and nowhere else until the job has been completed. Uh, give finger to boss. I don't understand finger. Well, then you're in for a long ride, my friend. Uh, talk man. The chief's not happy with you, Danny, the man says. You better get over the shuttle bay soon. By the way, you still owe me 20 buckazoids. You best cough it up soon. Okay, let's talk to this guy. Talk man. Whoa. You better get moving, Danny. And don't forget that 20 buckazoids you owe me. Do I owe everyone here 20 buckazoids? I think I might. You better get moving. Yeah, okay. Do I? Okay, yeah, all right. Let me just make sure I... Okay, cool. All right, off we go. So Space Quest II, um, when I was a little kid, probably like 12 years old, uh, I came to California for, the, for one of the first times and played this game with my uncle, uh, my uncle Bruce. And I never dreamed that I would be living in California um, 
but I could not get very far in this game at all because, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit for grownups. Um, it's not as intuitive as, you know, Super Mario or anything like that. Um, and there are puzzles that I, I didn't know what an athletic supporter was at the time because, you know, I had a fucking baby dick and you don't need that shit. Okay, so let's look around this room. You are in the orbital station's shuttle bay. A shuttle, fresh from a passenger drop-off on Xenon, is refueling for its next trip. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway. A refueler pl replenishes the shuttle supply. Look. Refueler. It's not much to look at. The refueler is just a rectangular structure which bears a pressure gauge and a hose outlet for the transfer of fuel. The hose is currently hooked to a shuttle. Um, unhook refueler. I, oh, didn't spell that right. Don't mess with it. It's automatic. Besides, if you can't be trusted with a broom, highly volatile liquids are definitely out of the question. That is a solid point. All right, guess I'll just hop on in this ship. The, shuttle's, the shuttlecraft is your standard 10-passenger short commute vehicle. Uh, it was primarily designed to ferry people and supplies between orbital stations, Xenon, and other orbiting spacecraft. Well, great. Let's just get on up in here, then. You enter the shuttle and start sniffing around for the mess you must clean. You are surprised to find that the shuttle is not empty. There are two extremely ugly suckers walking towards you. Hey, what the- your favorite expletive here? I'm gonna go with fuck. Pow! Thwack! Bink! Thud! Your protest is cut short as two interstellar ruffians proceed to thump you into unconsciousness. Everything fades. Time passes. More time passes. A strange dream turns into the realization that you are being shaken and talked to by a voice unfamiliar to you. A dull ache triggers a distant memory of a scuffle in which you were the focal point. Yeah, I got my ass beat. Upon awakening from your forced rest, it becomes quite apparent that you aren't in Kansas, the Xenon, anymore. You find that you are being held upright and under physical restraint from both sides by, you guess, the galactic goons you met on the shuttle. As you try to struggle free, you notice that your hands are tied behind your back. As the eyes dial into focus, you make out the oddly disfigured, oh, you make out an oddly disfigured being seated before you. Got it. Oh, fuck, it's Sludge Vohal. Already. Damn, this game throws you right into it. A sagging mass of flesh that appears to have been human at one time. Tubes and wires extend from his body, leading to machines which keep him alive. Suddenly, his visage stirs and he begins to speak. Well, well. Did we have a nice nap? I'm giving him Bane voice for some reason. I thought we would have to resort to drastic measures to wake you. <sighs> oh well. Welcome to my humble fortress, Danny. The name's Vohal. Sludge Vohal. I was the genius behind the star generator when it was still in the concept stages. It was to be my ultimate war weapon until some sissy pants scientist decided it would be better used saving lives rather than destroying them. What a waste of technology. Excuse me if I sound bitter. If this- if anyone remembers, uh, in the cartridge, I believe, on, in, from the first game, uh, there's a message on there from Slash Vohal, uh, one of the scientists who worked on it, who must be this, and he changed his name to Sludge when he became a disgusting sludgy mess. Anyway, you ruined my Sarian operation. I was going to use the star generator to make Xenon pay for what they did to me. They were going to know my wrath in a big way. You somehow managed to change all that. Oh, I suppose I should have known better than to use those mental midget Sarians. That's not the point, however. You are responsible, and you shall pay. Besides, I have another plan, and you'll not be around to foil it. I have devised a plan so horrible, so frightening, so diabolical, that no one will be able to stop me. Observe my latest creation. Boop. I intend to infest your planet with thousands of these genetically engineered door-to-door -door life insurance salesmen. I will at least- I will at last reap sweet revenge from the scientific community that mocked me. My plan was to kill you, but I've had a change of heart. <laughs> Get it? He peers down at the hoses protruding from his chest and connected to his life support system. Forgive me. I'm a kidder. 
I've decided I would get much more enjoyment watching you suffer. My associates will escort you to the surface of Labian, where you will perform many painful hours of manual labor in my mines. Be seeing you. <laughs> I was always unnerved by that douchey laugh of his. Um, and yeah, he's going to send a bunch of fucking life insurance salesmen onto my planet and ruin them. F fuck. Ruin it. An injection renders you unconscious. Your drugged carcass is loaded onto a shuttle. Upon reviving, you look through the viewing port to see... Well, you look through the viewing port to see Vohal's massive asteroid fortress getting smaller. Oh man, what an action sequence. Look at that scale! At the time, it was very impressive, I do have to be completely honest. Oh yeah, I'm all bound up. Can't do shit. After touching down on a giant landing platform, you are ushered to a hovercraft waiting to transport you to the mining site. Utter despair sets in. Okay, so these guys are probably taking me somewhere cool and it'll, it'll be awesome. So what do you guys do? You guys just, you, are you monkey people all the time and camouflage? Ah, fuck it. Ignore the repeating tree patterns that, uh, we are definitely not going in circles. It's just, you know, limitations of the genre at the time. It's kind of hard to- oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh dicks. Uh-oh. Oh great. I suppose we're out of fuel. Way to go, Gorf Breath. Don't blame me. It was your turn to fill up. You're always forgetting to do it. Wait till the master finds out. You're in big trouble. Hey, don't talk to me that way, you slime bucket. I filled it last time. Dip. The argument between... Oh, wow, he's going to say dipshit. I didn't even pick up on that as a child. The argument between the two guards is cut short as gravity reasserts itself. Ah, oh, shit. Crash, goddammit. Yeah, so th they're super fucking dead. Good thing that guard broke your fall. He doesn't look too happy about it, though. All right, look. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The growth here is unlike anything you're used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby are the bodies of your former captors. Look. Body. The guard appears to be less thick than you remember him. Many of his formerly contained body fluids seem to be at large. Great. Uh, search body. You search the grotesque body and find a small, thin magnetic card. It looks like a key card. You seem to recall seeing one somewhere in the past. Well, then I'll take that key card. It's gonna be rad. Okay, got it. And let's check this craft. The hovercraft has been reduced to a mound of twisted wreckage. Everything that was straight is bent. Everything that was bent is benter. There appear to be no salvageable parts. Uh... Search. Craft. Everything inside is twisted and bent. You do notice a button with a flashing light next to it. It seems to be emitting a high-pitched beep. Well then, let me go ahead and push that button. Well, or I could punch the button. Push button. You press the button, the light goes dark, and you no longer notice the high-pitched beep. That's probably good. Uh, look. Body. This guard's body has been fatally damaged by the fall. Search body. You search the grotesque body and find nothing. Well, great then. Let me save my game. Because we did a thing. I did a thing. Whoop. I did a thing. And now, two are dead. Whoop. Dead. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, great. Um, now I get to walk around and explore this majestic land. The whole world is in front of me. And it- oh shit. Well then. Ah, you fall to the bottom of a concealed pit. You might have survived the fall had you not come in contact with the several 30 centimeter long spikes planted vertically along the bottom of the pit. Well, fuck. Another senseless tragedy. You can help prevent this. Vote yes on lobotomies for adventure game designers. Thank you for playing Space Quest 2, Danny. You've been most entertaining. Well, thank you guys. 
Let me just restore. Okay. And we're back. Okay, so now, now that I've fallen through that, I do remember it. And, um, it is pretty clearly marked. Uh, I keep seeing these eyes around the perimeter, so let me see if I can say, look, eyes. You must be seeing things. Oh, I don't know about that, man. I think I'm, I think I'm being watched. Not cool. Um, wow. Okay. So here's some shrooms. Uh, look. Shrooms. Damn it. Look. Mushrooms. Aside from their enormous size, they appear to be your average garden variety mushrooms. Well, then surely there's going to be no problem with me just fucking walking up into the- God damn it. <sighs> Holy jeez, boy! That mushroom thing sucked you clean up! You can't move a muscle, nor see a speck of light. You begin feeling waves of tingling, warmth, and moisture. Suddenly it's not so bad in here. Wow, check out the colors, dude. Your body and mind enjoy the short-lived buzz that is a side effect of the lethal poison you, are now, you now marinate in. You are oblivious to the end. Not a bad way to go, actually. But it sure is early in the game. I had high hopes for you. They said, who? Danny? Not a chance. That chump won't last 20 minutes. I said, no way! Danny isn't that lame. So anyway, don't make me look stupid, too. Okay. That's two deaths. Thanks for playing. You've been very entertaining. Well, thank you. Let's restore. So, my buddy, uh, Trolls, 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 I don't know how to pronounce his name, still, even though he told me multiple times, but I'll say Trolls. Trolls Plymart, the Space Quest historian, uh, has done a couple playthroughs of, of all the Space Quest games, and he played this one through, and he had a very good point, uh, which was that these mushrooms were kind of the first thing you could encounter, um, in any Space Quest game that had no benefit to them, uh, to you. They are only there to kill you. Um, and that is kind of cool. Oh, foliage is too dense. Um, and that's kind of cool because it really does add something to this game, the way, um, the, the obstacles they throw in your way. And, and that kind of made it especially tough too when I was a kid for, with these types of games because I would just sit here trying to interact with these mushrooms for hours, uh, and there, there was nothing to be gained from them. Uh, a real dick to the face. A real dick to my, my, my childhood face. Which, of course, is illegal. Okay, so we're going to head over here now. Let's see what's back here, maybe. Because um, we're kind of running out of places to search. There we go. Okay, let's see what's up here. You are in a strange-looking stand of woods. Well then. Boop. Suddenly from somewhere to the east you hear a twang, followed by a high-pitched shriek. Well, let's go check that out. <laughs> I'm unarmed, and something terrible's happening. Time to investigate. Aww, look at that little fella. Look. Creature. The little creature caught in the snare has thick-looking pinkish skin. He looks to be less than a meter tall. He doesn't seem too thrilled with his predicament. All right, well, let's see if I can kiss, kiss it, kiss creature. You really aren't attracted to it. Well, I'm glad they, glad they made a response to that. Um, uh, talk creature. He doesn't respond. Help creature. In what way? Uh, untie creature. There you go, little buddy. You seem friendly, like a friendly fellow. <laughs> Before disappearing through a tiny hole in the brush, the little creature gives you a long glance. Aw, he liked me. I'm a friend. Um, I, hmm, can I take this rope? I can't remember. Without the weight of the little creature on the rope, it is not within your reach. Okay, so be it. Ooh, those eyes creep me out. Um, maybe stand on rock? That wouldn't be helpful. Well then, perhaps climb tree. The tree is coated with a thin, slimy film, making it unclimbable. Climbable. Okay, uh, I don't think I can follow the creature that way. 
So I'm going to go back this way. Um, this game, I'm a little... I've definitely like played it through a couple of times, um, but I'm less familiar with this one than I am with like one and three. So I might might have to peek at a walkthrough every now and then. Um, but that's fine. No one's going to hate on me. Oh, I remember this though. Okay, so look. This is another clearing in the otherwise heavily wooded area of the forest. There's a plateau near the back. Look. Plateau. Fuck, I should have paid attention when they were writing that. It is like other areas, only raised a little. A mailbox sits up there. Look, mailbox. You need to be closer. All right, well, in the meantime, I'll look ground. The ground looks like everywhere else, with the exception of some growths, which look like spores or pods. Um, let's save, because chances of those being friendly. Slim. I rest good creature it good nice okay let's see here um oh, you have seemed to have kicked one of these strange little spores and yep okay just as i suspected i am coughing i am hacking and i am dying your kick caused some spores to open and spray a fine powder into the air as a result you are paralyzed from head to toe unable to move a single muscle um, help. Oh, that actually is helpful. Whoops. Uh, uh, the, uh, okay. Um, I guess wait? Due to paralysis, you are only capable of displacing air. Huh. Am I dead? Am I not dead? I think I'm dead. Am I dead? Restore. Let's just... <laughs> let's, let's just do... Let's, let's just restore that. <laughs> Although the, the image of me lying face down like that was quite funny. Um, pick up... Spore. You take possession of one of the spores, being careful not to mistakenly break it open. Okay, good. Look... Spore. This is one of the unopened spores. Great. Great, great, great. Um, okay. So, let's go up here. And I remember what we have to do with that mailbox, which was one of the few things I was able to figure out as a kid and made me feel <laughs> very accomplished. Okay, this is taking a hot second. So, in the meantime, I will just tell you that Space Quest 2 was one of those games that... Oh, the foliage here is much too dense to, play through, uh, to pass through. Space Quest 2 was one of those games that um, could infuriate you. Oh, you hear something. It sounds not unlike the hovercraft you wrecked in. That's not good. They, they could kill me for sure. Um, I think what that beep was was a transmitting sound. Uh, in the destroyed hovercraft, and that's alerting um, the other bad guys to come and kill me. But, in the meantime, let's look at this mailbox. The mailbox looks typical for a mailbox. There is a slot, a tray, and a sign. Read sign. The sign says Radical Express, when it totally, no doubt for sure, has to be there a while previously. Excellent. Um, look. Slot. The slot looks much like an opening in the exterior of the mailbox through which a thin piece of mail might pass. Well then, use order form on slot. Ugh. Um, put form in slot. You drop the order form into the box. Ugh. I love old school computer sounds. The mailbox hums and buzzes for a while. Then an object of some sort drops into the tray at the base of the box. The machine goes silent. Look, tray. Okay, you always did understand it. Um, look, object. I don't think that's in view right now. Um, look, mailbox. The mailbox, uh, okay, look, tray. 
Okay, the tray is actually a small indentation in the lower part of the machine. It is currently bearing what looks to be a whistle. Well then, that shit is mine. Take whistle. Okay. So this, by the way, is the whistle that um, uh, the android in Space Quest 3 comes after you for stealing. Like you didn't pay for it fully or some shit. I don't remember. But the Arnold Schwarzenegger android from the Space Quest 3 playthrough, um, that, is, uh, that is the reason because of the whistle I just got in that little mailbox. Isn't that cray? Ain't that shit cray? All right, so I'm going to save my game again because we've been doing some stuff here. Um, got whistle from Trey. Hey, hey. Cool. Um, wonder if I can, t whoops. I keep doing that, man. So sorry, so embarrassing. Um, let's see what help has to do. Whoop. Oh shit. Okay, you, all right. So I have to, I don't know if the hovercraft can get me here. It might only be on that one screen. Um, but yeah, they're, they're just patrolling this area. And uh, if they catch me, they will fly in out of nowhere, zap the shit out of me, and there's nothing I can do. And then I fucking die. And then, oh, okay. I remember this quite well. This is a huge pain in the ass. Um, I'm gonna just save that again. Okay, so what I have to do is, well, first I'll look. You are in another clearing in the forest. This one seems to be occupied by a type of growth you are not familiar with. Goodbye, little guy picking berries. Look, growth. It appears to be some kind of overdeveloped root. There is a pulsating growth near the middle which is connected to several meters of root-like appendages. So here's the bitch of this thing. I have to get back there and pick the berries um, in this goddamn situation. Uh, all of these roots are electrified. And if I touch any of them, I fucking die. Oh, 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 oh. I'm trying to do the fast version of this, but this actually huh, requires a good deal of Fuck! Yeah, see? See how that happens? Th okay, well... Mm -hmm. Great. Good! You've succeeded in establishing contact with one of this planet's life forms, and it looks like you'll get to examine it up close and personal. The giant root-looking thing is giving you a guided tour of its digestive system. What you experience next is too horrible to describe. Let's just say that you die as a result. You are dead. Trust me. It may please you to know that during the night, you didn't digest well. For a while, gastric distress made it extremely unpopular with the other root monsters. Okay, cool. Another senseless tragedy. Okay, well, you know what? I may have died, but hey, at least I made the monster that ate me all farty and bloated. And, um, then his friends made fun of him. I'm into that. Definitely into that. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, this is so tricky. Okay, I'm just gonna save it here. Whoa, you see that shit? Oh, those magic mic fingers going up your cooter! Sorry, that's, that's something Aaron says, but I'm very much a fan of it. Okay, oh baby. Oh, baby. Oh, uh, and duck. Yes! Yes! Fuck you, root man. Would you want your mother to hear you say that? Yeah, she's fine with it. She, she's a, she's a grown-up. Okay, look, berries. Isn't this a sweet, primitive time when berries were just like pixels, like, pfft, there's a berry. The berries hanging on the bush look quite juicy and smell very pungent. This was also the game where I learned what the word pungent meant because I looked that up right afterwards. Now I use it all the time. Pick berries. Yeah! Pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it. You snag some of the odiferous red berries. 
Okay, let's save it again. Because, uh, yeah. If I die on the way back, that will certainly be disappointing and embarrassing. And also, 60% likely? Yeah, I think, I think maybe 75. Okay, so here we go. Boop -da boop Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sorry, I'm not saying much at this point. I just want to... Uh -huh. Uh, oh, 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 baby. Oh, feeling so good about myself. Oh, fuck, I fucked it up. Right as I was talking shit. Why do I have to talk shit? Oh, why do I talk shit? Okay, here I go again. In moments like this, I like to recount um, the very intense scene from Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade where Indiana Jones is trying to figure out how to get through the trials, um, and he just watched a dude get his head cut off um, before he goes, so he realizes that there are terrible saw blades happening. Whew, baby. Um, and the only clue he has is that only the penitent man shall pass. So it goes back and forth between him and Sean Connery, going, only the penitent man shall pass. And then... He and Sean Connery are both like, penitent, penitent, penitent. So I do that all the time, and see, it fucking worked. So let me save it. Penitent. Is that how you spell penitent? Let's try it a different way. Penitent. Pen. 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 Penitent. Penitent, penitent. Okay, we're good. All right, great. That that can sometimes take a long time, so I'm quite pleased with myself that I uh, that I got past it. Okay, so now I'm a little unsure on where to go next. The foliage here is much too dense. There's there's only a few more options, um, but I mean, believe it or not, when I was a kid, I never even got past this part of the forest. Like that's as far as I got. Um, you have now seen me in however long it's been solve as many puzzles as I, as I could in, like, years of playing this as a kid. How shameful. Um, does something happen when you lick the tree? I feel like... It, I don't understand lick. Okay. Climb tree? I feel like something happens. You're not in a good place to do that. Climb tree. Now isn't a good time for that. Well, fuck you, man. I'll climb, I'll climb a damn tree whenever I want. Wherever I want. You know my dad. You know my dad. The foliage here is much too dense. Okay, so in that case... Oh, I hear something. Uh, I have to hide. Um, whoop. I know, but... Hide. Say what? Alright, I'm just gonna stay here. The, yep, see? There they are. Those dick bags. But luckily they didn't... Oh, did they see me? Nope. That was a tense moment. Bohol's thug failed to spot you and is off to search elsewhere. <laughs> that fuckface, I was there the whole time. Great. Okay, so now I think I have to go up here? Is that correct? I don't know. This place actually isn't that big. It does, it's not as big as it looks. It's because so many places are walled off by the dense foliage, as we have discussed before. Um, oh, hey bud. Look, creature. You see a small fleshy being. He seems in a hurry to leave. To be in a hurry to leave. Okay. Well. Look, you are standing at the edge of an eerie swamp. You can hear the croaks and moans of swamp life, none of which you are eager to encounter. Mm okay. I feel like... Yuck. Oh, that's sludgy. I feel like there was something bad that happens here. Up. Oh. oh, oh yeah, that's that's what it is. That motherfucker, he'll follow me and he'll drag me down and kill the shit out of me. Um 
I like that. That's kind of a Star Wars move, like when they're in the trash compactor in A New Hope, and you only see the thing's eye, but you're like, oh, that thing is big and awful. Um, oh, I remember. Okay, so that, what, what the little pink guy was doing was, um, he was rubbing the berries on himself. I forgot about that. Look, berries. The strange red berries pack a very pungent aroma. Um, rub berries on nub. Well, let's just write on self. There we go. You rub the berries all over your body. You now smell like a walking ammonia inhalant. Well, that's great. That's what I fucking wanted. Oof. It is slow goings here. Let's see. Help. Um, tab shows the status screen. Escape pops up menus. Pauses the game. Okay. It, I don't think I... Mm, let's see. Let's try tab. Whoops. Okay. Well, n normally I would turn the game a little faster, but um, the button that does that... Um, is now used to like get you out of the game and back to the internet that we're playing this thing on. See, it's it's chasing after me. And it's like, oh, shit. You feel something slimy clamp down on your leg and almost as suddenly spit you back out. You distinctly hear the sounds of aquatic gagging and retching. Evidently, you had a bad aftertaste from the berries. So I just saved myself. Um, if I didn't have that, it would have just dragged me down. Fucking look eyes. Those goddamn thing. Oh, son of a bitch. They're there, bro. Okay, so there's a place in this in this swamp. Hmm. I don't think it's here. There's a place in the swamp where oh, you have steeped, stepped into a deeper area of the swamp. You are forced to swim. Okay. This is what I, whoop, okay. This is what I wanted to do. Um, take deep breath. Whoops. You take a deep breath, filling your lungs to near bursting and head for the depths below. Yes, you gotta dive, baby. Underneath the water, underneath the water, ta -ha, underneath the water. Ha -ha. So yeah, I think, um, out of this world and a lot of a lot of later games got their um idea of swimming underwater from this game i believe well i guess super mario did it too but um i remember this feeling very like revolutionary like whoa i'm in an underground cave swimming through the slime water um but what's this a light beyond yonder window breaking Aw, shit. Look at that. Look. You are in a small grotto below the swamp. A strange light dances off the walls of this cave. Its origin, a glowing gem situated on top of a boulder. Take. Gem. You take the glowing gem. Look, gem. The glowing gem provides a gentle illumination. So now, another, uh... Fun fact from Space Quest 3, this is the hunk of Orium that I give to Fester Blatz, uh, the, uh, the gross backwoods alien salesman. Um, okay, take deep breath. And so that was just a really cool thing for me as a kid, like the way these games connected together and you would succeed at w in one game and then like, Two years later, the next one would come out and you still had the same stuff in your pockets and you're like, whoa, I remember that. I'm so proud. Um, although this game, I beat after I had beaten Space Quest 3. So I had the, whoa, that's where that's from kind of reaction instead, um, which was pretty cool. So now I'm covered in swamp water. I already stink of berries, which make me too disgusting to even be eaten by a swamp creature. And, uh, life is good. Now I'm cruising to the other side of the swamp with my determined swinging fists of power. 
Who? Oh, am I caught on a tree? No, there it is. Okay. I love it. Okay, we made it. We're out of that grotto-y, swampy area. We're out of the main jungle. Ah. <sighs> All right. Let's save that, because we did stuff. Got gem. It's truly outrageous. Cool. That was a gem in the holograms reference, by the way. Like, um, we are the misfits, our songs are better. We are the misfits, and we're gonna get her. Yeah, check out Gem in the Holograms. Really, really powerful cartoon. You are in a lightly forested area. A large fissure nearby seems to lead straight down. Um, look, tree. This tree is dead. The bark must have fallen off years ago. It bears no foliage. Well, isn't it certainly, um, serendipitous that a dead tree would be right on the edge of a cliff? There isn't much to see, as you may have noticed. So perhaps I'll push the tree. That would, oh, no. Um, perhaps I'll climb the tree. This tree is dead and seems to be free of the slick secretions some of the others generate. You begin to shimmy your way up the, oh, shinny your way up the snag. Oh, sh it's been a while since I've had a good snag shinnying. All right, crack. Oof. Holy log jams, Batman. You almost ate the big one. Okay. Look. You are in a lightly- oh, okay. We know that. Oh, oh, okay. That's how I'm moving. Got it. Thought there would be something more special to it. Hmm. I don't trust any area this open. You are in a thinly forested area just east of the fissure. Okay. So let's- just, let me look at those mountains. Those are pretty mountains in the back. It's a long way down and you can't see anything of note. Look, trees. Yes, you see before you a tree. Cool, thanks guys. All right. Cool. Ah, fucking dicks. Ah, dicks. Yikes, you have been snared. Suspended above the ground, you are unable to move freely. Well, shitballs. This is an issue. I'm having an ish. Um. Not right now. Okay. Uh, cry. Not right now. Yell. Not right now. After a while, the cerebral fireworks begin. Capillaries begin to burst under the strain. You pass out. Once again, time passes. And then, some more time passes. While unconscious, you have the strangest of dreams. You imagine that your name is Larry. You are wearing something known as a leisure suit, apparently made of 100% synthetic materials and proven to generate large amounts of static electricity. Aw yeah, sweet leisure suit Larry reference. While prowling a locale known as the land of the lounge lizards, you spend your time badgering women of the area to participate in bizarre mating rituals such as, just then, consciousness begins to creep in. Your head begins to clear and you realize that you have been imprisoned. Your captor appears to be that large oaf sitting near the fire. Look. Oaf. The hunter looks hungry. Look. You are in a well-hidden clearing. It is surrounded on three sides by large smooth rock formations with brush to the north. A cage, a cage is below one of the formations. You are currently in it. Okay. Pardon me for one second while I take a small sip of water. Oh, fuck yeah. All right. In the center of the campfire, oh, in the center, a campfire burns. One has to wonder about the purpose of such a fire during a warm day as this. A rope, a rope sits on one of the boulders. A large beast is nearby. Okay. Look, beast. The hunter looks hungry. Okay. Um, look, cage. The cage is made of some very hard branches. They might as well be welded steel bars. 
All right, I know what to do. Yell. The hunter seems to ignore you. Yell. Yeah, bitch. Come check this out. The hunter stands and takes a long look in your direction. His face, though strange in its own right, bears an expression one might see on a freak show patron. He moves closer. Um, I am going to throw the spore and knock this dick out. Yeah, fucker! <laughs> Upon impact with the ground, the spore opens and spews its dust into the air. The hunter falls to the ground, paralyzed. Search hunter. You search the large, not to mention uncleansed, body of the hunter. You find a key which might unlock the cage. Other than that, you find only a few assorted parasites clinging to him. Take key. You reach through the bars and take possession of the key. Use key on cage. Say what? Use key. How would you like to do that? Oh boy. Use key on lock. That does not compute. Um, open cage with key. Oh God, open door with key. Come on. Unlock cage with key. You slip the key into the lock and give it a turn. The lock snaps open. Of course he's still, he's awake now, great. You have caused the guard to be paralyzed. I don't think he's pleased with you. Well, fucking dicks, man. Like, the... Ah, oh, busy worrying about semantics. The hunter has decided that it's the perfect day for a barbecue. As he slowly turns you over the fire, you begin to turn a beautiful golden brown. Oh, that is nice. Death follows at an agonizingly long distance. Okay, great. Way to go, wingnut! Once again, you've demonstrated your inability to sustain life. You quickly glance around the room to see if anyone saw you blow it. Thank you for playing Space Quest 2, Danny. You've been swell to watch. Have a nice day. No! It's not that easy. Oh man, good thing I... Um... Good thing I saved it fairly recently. Uh, okay, so climb tree... Scooch, 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 scooch. And down goes the trizzle. Okay. And we're good. I wonder what happens when I'm like super low to the ground. I mean, I'm sure that snare gets me no matter what, but I always kind of wondered. Um, whoop, nope, never mind. All right. Well, that's super clear. It's super obvious. Yikes! You have been snared. Suspended above the ground, you are unable to move freely. Great! Great, great, great. I know. Capillaries, passing out, all that shit. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> this game definitely makes you pay for it if you don't save constantly. Um, okay. So... Let's do this. Um, yell. Yell. Come on over, bitch. Throw. Spore. Chokey, chokey. Take. Key. Reach the bars. Take possession of the key. Unlock. Door. With key. You slip the key into the lock and give it a turn. The lock snaps open. <laughs> Maybe I'll go ahead and open the door. Okay, great. Kick body. Mm, kick. I really want to kick this guy. Kick beast. All right, fine. I won't kick it. Take spore. Whoops. The spent spore would be of no use to you now. Okay. Um, well, that's rope, so I need that. Take rope. You grab the rope. All right. I am fucking out of here, baby. Peace, bitch. Oh. Mmm. Oh, dear. I remember getting shot here once before. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get 
get the hell back. Okay, so that's that's a weird kind of thing I remember from playing this game through the first time. Um, that's the end of the world right there. Wah! Oh, 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 I got scared. Okay. Um, so it took me a little while to figure out what to do here, but um, what you have to do is you have to climb on the tree and then tie the rope to the tree, not the three, the tree. You'll have to decide between the stump and the log. Oh, tie rope to stump. You're not near a good place to tie the rope. Huh, okay, tie rope to stump. Look at that, I didn't know that. I thought you could only tie it to the log, that's cool. Uh, climb down rope. Yeah, you head over the edge and down the rope. Oh, well, this looks friendly. Um, okay. This looks like another excellent save opportunity. Oh, fuck my cock. Oh, oh no, not cock my cock. Now, nah, well, too late now. Um, Okay, so, ah! Wow, looks like I made the right move. You release your grip on the rope. This has a negative effect on your resistance to the urging of gravity. Great, let's um, restore. Okay, um, look. You are on a sheer sided gorge suspended on a rope between the two rock faces. There is a mammoth member of the local fauna to the right. It looks to be in constant need of nourishment, hence the look being cast you. Um, the look being cast you. Yeah, that makes grammatical sense. Okay, so, look beast. He's a hardy sized fellow. You would guess him to be quite the energy guzzler. His stare suggests serious caloric lust. Okay. Um, ah! Oh shit! Was the stump not good enough? Looks like that stump wasn't a good thing to tie to. Well, damn. Look at that. Huh. Now I know. Uh -huh. Alright, let's climb back up. Take rope. Take rope. Okay. Climb log. Climb log. Okay. Okay. Tie rope. Aye. Tie rope to log. Cool. Climb down. All right, here we go again. So. Swing rope. All right, I'm going to have to release my grip on the rope at just the right moment. It gets a little harrowing. It gets a little harrowing. The closer I get to the monster perched directly on the edge of the cliff. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Here we go. Get ready for it. Feeling it happen. Get- no, oh, okay, getting a little close. Okay. Oh, uh, I think I can get away with one more. I think I can get away with one more? Okay, and now! Yes! Fuck you, dude. Yeah, I would. Look, beast. Nope. Look, beast. I want to hear like a satisfying, like, he's mad. Oh, nope, okay. Alright, well. Eat dicks, bitch. I'm out of here. Okay, um. Look. 
Being as dark as it is in here, there isn't much to see. You do see light coming from the east. Okay, so if I walk through this um, room while it's dark, not only will it be hard to find my way, but I will definitely die. So um, I'm going to take out the gem. Use gem. It's fine where it is. Um, take out the gem. Use gem. There it is. Okay, I just had to be in the darkness. You take out the gem and hold it in your palm. The room is illuminated by its glow. You hear a small shriek and the sound of many footsteps moving away from you. Yeah, that whatever that was that I just scared away with the light, um, that's what would have eaten me, without question. So good. Look at this. I can't even get around these rocks it, while, while they're in full fucking visibility. Oh, there we go. All right. Making my way through the caves. I always like the way they did caves in these Sierra games. It's so simple, but whoa! The ground below your feet disappears. You tumble down through the darkness. Cool! I'm here now. Okay. That was a rather spectacular entrance. All systems seem to be intact, though. All right, look. You are at the bottom of a steep gorge, almost totally surrounded by impassable rock. There is an opening to the southeast. The walls extend up a great distance. There are two more of those pink guys here. You wonder what they're up to. Oh, hey guys. Uh, talk. The dwelling, the dwellers mumble something. The translator responds with, follow us, beanpole. They hurry away. Okay. Um, well, there's my gem. So let me take that gem. And there's a pile of rocks, so let me take a rock. There's nothing here by that name which can be acquired. Look, rocks. It, it kind of looks like a boulder dam. Get it? Boulder dam? Sorry, bad joke. Okay, great. Pick up rock. No? Are you sure about that? I feel like I'm going to need a rock. I feel like I remember needing a rock here. Um, pick up rock. Oh my god. Listen, you know me. I ain't scared of the rock. Let me just check one more time. Search. Rubble. No, not ruble. I don't understand rubble. Search. Rocks. It's that computer. All right. Look. Rocks. Nope. All right. Fine, fine, fine. I'll find another way. God damn it. F my life. You're effing my life away, Space Quest. That's what you're doing. Um. Oh, hello. Well, welcome to our canyon. You look to be from out of town. On behalf of all of us, I would like to thank you for saving our compadre from the hunters. You're welcome to stay in the canyon as long as you like. When you are ready to leave, simply say the word, and my assistance will show you the only way out for a being of your size. When you leave, however, we must seal the exit behind you for our own protection. Goodbye, and good luck. Thank you, one guy with hair and a tie. Okay, well, that's why you're the chief. Um, I need to take a rock. Take rock. You are not constructed in a manner that will allow you to do anything to the boulders. You might get those little pink guys to move one of them. Hmm. Okay, tell you what. I'm going to take a little break and, uh, ooh, excuse me. Um, catch a breather, have something to drink real quick, and uh, I shall return. It'll still be this one long episode, but I shall return momentarily. Thank you. And we're back. Hello. Okay. Um, just had myself a little nap. I actually did. I feel much better now. Um, okay, so it's time to give the word to these guys. Uh, say word. And they move that, and off I go. Um, oh, shit. That's right. Uh, okay, do not adjust your television screens. Um... Uh, I have to put the gem in my mouth. Uh, my mouth. To, there we go. 
Bah, better. Okay, so yeah, it's super dark. I'm gonna use a, a walkthrough for this part, just cause like, whoops, didn't mean to push that. Um, just because this could take a while. You kind of have to like fumble around in the dark for a little bit and make sure. <coughs> oh, oh God. Oh, excuse me. I feel bad for whoever, whoever has to use this microphone next. Okay, so let's go down the ladder all the way. Um, yeah, if you stay if you stay in the maze too long, oh, okay. Suddenly an inhuman guttural moan echoes through the narrow caves. You're not sure which direction it came from. The only thing you do know for sure is that you've just soiled your undergarment. Well, lucky for me, I have an athletic supporter as a spare. Um I yeah, if you go the wrong way or stay in these caves too long, a squid comes out and eats you. And that's not fucking cool. So we're just gonna, let's see, follow this path, and then as soon as we hit a ladder going down, um, yeah, like this one, we're gonna go down until we can go left or right. Did it ta? Okay. Um, okay, and then we go right all the way. Oh yeah, this would have taken for fucking ever. I don't have the time for this shit. Um, go down the ladder all the way. Go right until you hit another ladder. So yeah, th this was when you would have to like, in in the olden times, um, you would have to basically just trial and error this a million different ways and um, like basically set up a notebook with with a pen and kind of map out each place as you go, which was kind of fun in its own way, but you know, fucking my God, man, I'm 38 years old. I got, I got shit to do. So, uh, go left past two ladders, go down the third ladder until you can go left or right and then go right all the way. Can you see how this would have taken an unnecessarily long amount of time? There's actually... The Space Quest guys loved their mazes. Um, the most insane and unnecessary maze is in Space Quest V, which is actually my favorite Space Quest. Um, I'm sure we'll play it on the show someday. But uh, that one, man, friggin' like that, that actually, ah, oh, how gorgeous. That, that maze in that game actually makes me want to vomit blood and b kill myself. You have an opportunity to stand and spare your tender knees. <sniffs> the crystal clear water gives off a gentle glow. In abundance, it is able to light the room. You take the glowing gem from between your aching jaws. You notice it is overly moist as you slip it into your pocket. How nice. Okay, look. This is a very pretty scene. This place is amazing. Beautiful subterranean waterfalls and cascades drop before you, filling the air with billions and billions of tiny misty droplets, which tickle the cilia. The air is thick with re revitalizing humid freshness. This message is also getting a little thick. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, I guess there's, well, first of all, I'll save it so we don't have to do that again if I die. I forgot, oh, cuck my cock. It's been a little while in real time. Uh, beautiful caves like the butt of oh no i was gonna say of an angel but we'll just have to go with beautiful caves like the butt so i'm gonna slide into this pool maybe i can drink some of this water while it looks refreshing in a way you are slightly reluctant to drink water that glows maybe some other time you know what good fucking catch guys I'm I'm also down with uh with that sickness. Okay, so oh shit. I cannot quite remember which of these caverns to take. I'm going to try the right one first. Uh one is definitely death. As as with any choice in a Sierra game, one of them is a horrible death, and the other is maybe you'll live. So let's see here. 
Uh, yes, this is the good one. As you enter another of the mysterious subterranean chambers, you realize that the water is now racing toward a giant whirlpool in the middle of the area. You are caught in the strong current, powerless to alter your course. Alter... my course. Okay, great. Well, you just said it to me, so... Who's the asshole now, Space Quest 2? Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Your body is sucked down until finally you are able to resist no more and must yield to the overwhelming force. <laughs> I love that vomiting waterfall guy. It's just like, ha! Jeez, that was quite a trip. Peering around, you find yourself back in the open again. Look, wall. I don't think that's in view right now. Look, fountain. I don't understand fountain. Look, rocks. The rocks in this region are all gray and fairly rounded. There appears to be nothing of interest about them. Really nothing of interest? The fact that it's a huge, vomiting, giant man? Uh, well, whatever. These things happen. By the way, just so you guys know, the sound is on in this game. <laughs> it is just a very quiet game. Um, okay. And here we go. Um, there, oh yes, that's right. So let's look. You are in a little clearing which is surrounded by large boulders and impenetrable brush. There is water in which you entered. Yes, there is water in which you entered at the bottom left. You can just see a landing platform in the distance. Look, platform. Oh, no you don't. Look, platform. That does not appear to be in here to view. Okay, great. Uh, look, rock. <laughs> the rocks in this region are all gray and fairly rounded. Okay, there appears to be nothing interesting. So, here's the deal. This actually took me a long time to figure out. This is one of those moments in a Sierra game where when all else fails and it just feels like nothing is going on, you check your inventory, and you remember, oh, that's right, I got a whistle earlier. I wonder what the fuck that does. Look. Whistle. The whistle is usual looking. Okay, so you blow it. You blow the fucking whistle. You give the whistle a toot. It makes an odd sound, probably not unlike a toot. You hear an incredible whirring and grinding sound coming from the north. I have just called a Labion Terror Beast. Suddenly, a Labion Terror Beast buzzes into the room like a tornado. Like a wrecking ball! And he looks like he could do as much damage as one. Oh, a tornado. Yeah, I, I like him. He's like, huh? 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 And then he just fucks up everything in his path, which is why I am currently in the water. Um. So there's a lot of, like, little things here, like, three in a row that you have to get right, um, that took me a while to understand. One is to blow the whistle in the first place. The second is to throw the puzzle cube, because he loves puzzles for some reason. You can't do that while swimming. You're lucky if you can think and breathe simultaneously. Great! Okay, so let me just go ahead and wait for him to whiz on by. Um... Okay. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll just give him a little more room. Oh, jeez, man, he's really... <laughs> you chuck the Cubics Rube puzzle over to the beast. Oh, the beast appears interested in your offering. Curiosity gets the better of him as he reaches down for it. He seems quite perplexed by the puzzling plastic polyhedron. And he is fucking all into it. Talk, beast. It's not much of a talker. Kiss, beast. I don't understand your request. Yes, you do. Uh, touch, beast. Say what? Search, beast. Fuck this. Great. Okay, so he's all into that. Um, that's thing two. And the third thing, which is very easy to overlook, is this little pile of rocks. Look, rocks. The rocks in the... Uh, uh, 
look rubble, look pile. In the pile of debris lies a stone. There you go. That's the stone I was looking for back earlier because I knew I needed one. So pick up stone. That's a pretty easy one to miss. Uh, you pick up a small rock generated during the Terror Beast's grand entrance. Boop, got it. Look stone. It looks like an ordinary stone. Other rocks in view include many large boulders, one with a hole bored through it. Okay. And now I just kind of slide through this bitch. And now is an important, clever thing that I must do. Um, this is basically a David and Goliath situation. The guy is up there. He's got a gun. If he spots me, I'm dead. But I have to get to that door on the right side, on the, on the right post. Um, so I need to kill that dude from a distance. So what I must do is use rock in my athletic supporter. Um, let's see. Put rock in supporter. That act would lack any serious gratification. I never know how to phrase this. Um, sling rock with jockstrap. I'll laugh at the, if this works. That fucking works. Oh, great. You send the rock flying into the bushes. You hear it land. Okay. That didn't work. Pick up rock. Okay, well. Oh, well. Mm, I got problems. I got problems over here. Mm-hmm. 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 Pick up rock. There's only a pile of dust left. Well, shit dicks. Is there another way to kill this guy? Nope. Nope, okay. All right, he saw me that time. I have been fried. Dang, allowing the guard to observe you is not very swift. He has disassembled you, probably adding a little excitement to his otherwise dull day. Well, good for him. At least he got some joy out of it. Um, okay, so let's restore. Okay. Oh, jeez. I gotta swim through this shit again. Oh, fucking dickbags. Well, you know what? It's just a little more time I get to spend with my friends, the lovelies. How are you guys doing? You good? Everything going well in your life? No kidding. Tell me more. He did not. What? That's crazy. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, don't, you don't have to take that shit from anyone. No, you, you are a beautiful young man or woman. Okay, fine. Whatever. I like, yes, I, I also enjoy waffles. Okay, we're back at the whirlpool. All right, so now I'm going to fly through this one more time real quick. Matt and Ryan, uh, to spice this up, I don't know which one of you is doing this, but as Roger Wilco goes down the uh, whirlpool, can you add a toilet flushing sound effect? <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel, like, I feel like that really added a lot. I enjoyed it. Okay. So... These are the moments in Sierra games where, I mean, Aaron always accuses me of being a grandma with the amount of times I save, but these are the moments, like, it's not even that, like, you'll die, but you can very easily just do something stupid that ruins your entire game. So let's blow that whistle again. Okay. And throw puzzle. Okay, hello, hello. And off he goes, chucking the cube puzzle. All right, he soups into it, as always. I never could do Rubik's Cube puzzles. There's, I was watching this one video of like these kids who can do it in, in four seconds. Like, not just the dexterity of it, but the understanding of it. Their, their damn mathematical brains are incredible. Uh, pick up rock. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, pick up rock. Okay. Um. Sling rock at guard. Whoops. Sling rock at guard. There we go. Bam, bitch! Look right in the fucking head. You cleverly use the athletic supporter to sling the rock at the guard. It makes serious contact with the side of his head. We like the way you think. Yeah, bitch! He drops like a lead parakeet. The ripe thud of impact is momentarily sickening. He is perfectly still. Well, he got to have fun last time, and I got to have fun killing him this time. So, let's stroll right on over and see what's up with this dude. Uh, look body. I don't think that's in view right now. I think it is. Search body. You find nothing. Look guard. The guard is quite unconscious. It looks like he'll be out for a while. They just make super sure. Search guard. You find nothing. Okay. And we're in. So we'll just leave that dude there. Um, to bleed for a while? Look door. The elevator is nothing spectacular to look at. On the left side is a thin slot. Oh yeah, I have a key card. Use key card. That is not, are you sure? Use key card in slot. Say what? Do I not have a key card? Inventory. I got a key card, bitch. Use card in slot. Say what? Uh, fuck. Look door. Uh, the elevator's nothing spectacular. Okay. Look slot. It's very narrow. Uh, use key card on door. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Use key card in slot. Uh, wh why? What's happening? All right, hold on. I'll I'll consult a walkthrough because there's we obviously have some kind of semantic things. Um. Okay, it says insert card. You say okay. Come on, that's silly, guys. Program in a couple more. Whoops! It looks like it closed on my hand there. As soon as the elevator door closes behind you, the platform on which you rest begin to rise. Begins to rise. Hmm. Here I am up here. Okay, look, ship. It, lo it looks just like the shuttle that brought you here. Well, fucking great. Uh, get in, ship. You recall from when you landed, the entry hatch being on the rear left of the shuttle. You'll have to move a little. God damn it. Well, let me look at this vista first. You are on the landing platform. A shuttle sits quietly nearby. You see lush growth all around. Aw. How pretty. This this planet is quite beautiful for uh, an 8-bit whatever you'd call it. Um, enter ship. Uh, open hatch. Uh, enter hatch. Your legs will take you where you want to go in most cases. Oh, maybe it means... No. Oh. Oh yeah, the left side of the ship. Sorry, I was looking I was thinking stage left. Um Okay. Enter ship. You open the hatch and get in. Hey, look at those graphics. I have a little bit of a monkey face. It's fine. Look around. You are inside a shuttle cockpit. There is an instrument panel before you. Between your legs is a throttle. You fucking know it. You can see the local treetops. Okay, uh, look, panel. Everything looks automatic. The panel is loaded with clusters of system status, status indicators. There is a power button, an attitude dial, and an ascent thruster button. All right, I guess I'll push power. Boop! Excellent. Everything lit up. That's what I'm into. Um, turn the attitude dial. You'd think they meant altitude, but maybe they actually mean attitude. 
The attitude dial is now set to VAC. I don't know what that means, but it can only be good. And uh, what was the last thing? Um, look panel? Ascent thruster. Push thruster. I don't understand your request. Push ascent thruster button. Boom! The shuttle begins to vibrate as the ascent thrusters ignite. Aw, oh, yeah. Um, do I have to do something? Pull throttle? Yeah, there we go. Ascent thrusters ready. Attitude system vertical control. Forward descend, back ascend. That's easy enough. Press a key. All right. Well, I'm just going to keep ascending until we get into fucking space. How about that shit? Oh, we're already above the clouds. Nope. More clouds. Let's take a little peek. Um, monitor glows on the left thir third of the console. Look, monitor. Okay, that, that looks right. You're off the planet. Good work, Danny. Oh, thank you, game. The, a tone sounds. A soft, synthesized voice notes that adequate altitude has been achieved. Ascent thrusters are now ineffective. The monitor draws your attention again. Um, press a key. Ooh, I'm in space now. Okay, so I guess I have to turn the attitude dial. Now, I'm, now it's set to hack horizontal. So I'll push the throttle. Look at me figuring things out. And look at the space. Look at me moving through the space there. Oh, that's, that's pretty neat right there. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess this is the end of the game. Fuck, never mind. The screens are suddenly splashed with the incredibly horrible image of Sludge Vohal. God damn it. Hello, da Hello, Danny. What voice did I give him? Oh, Bane. I've been waiting for you. Once again, my subordinates have failed me. Anyway, it looks like you'll, you'll be visiting me again soon. Don't bother trying to pilot the vehicle. I have taken control. You will be arriving at my command post shortly. I anxiously await your arrival. He closes with a chilling laugh. Sounds like that. His image is frozen on the screens. The ship changes course as if it had a life of its own. All you can do is hang on. Well, I certainly do seem concerned. Take hand off throttle. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. What happens if, it, if I try to pull throttle? You feel the ship bank. Well, as Vohal stated, nothing works. Great. I'm fucked. Oh, yeah. It does appear that I'm going backwards now. Oh, and there's his ship. Just marvelous. Man, that thing was fucking right there. Just hovering over the planet, waiting for me to escape, just so it could fucking thrust bust my nuts. Through the window, you see your apparent destination, Vohal's asteroid. And back in we go. You know what? I never quite noticed, but your ship does look like a little bit like a suppository. And, uh, the, you know what? I don't know if that was intentional, but it's quite funny now that I look at it. Oh, baby. So here we are on Vohal's asteroid. Um, this, this is where the rest of the game will take place, basically. The massive bay doors meet, jarring the entire vehicle bay. As you step down, the shuttle door slams shut behind you. You are quite surprised not to find several of Vohal's guards waiting to greet you. You begin to ponder what the twisted scientist might have in store for you. All right, so let's save the game. And now I'm on ship. Fuck dicks. Oh no. Okay. So it's time to start wandering around this bitch um, and see what I can see. This ship is actually pretty damn big and uh, I can't get into that 
cool looking generator room yet, but I can do a little exploring. Um, look. You are in a small capsule shaped enclosure. Above the door is a digital readout which reads level one. The only other feature is a rectangular panel. Look panel. The panel has a vertical row of four buttons. There is some small engraving at the bottom edge of the panel. Look engraving. Uh, read engraving. The engraving reads, Bobco Lift Division, a subsidiary of Bobco Incorporated, universally famous makers of NAD's hamster tape. <laughs> First of all, I like that because NAD is my name backwards. And secondly, I love the idea of hamsters being mashed down into a fine paste and then converted into tape. Boldly go where no man has gone before. Truth. Um, look pan- oh, uh, push button, uh, one. I- oh. Uh, look panel? Uh, vertical row of- okay, look buttons. The buttons look ordinary. Each button has a word next to it. In order, they are one, three, four, and five. Okay, maybe, I guess we're on two. Push, one. Aren't you glad no one saw that? The digital readout shows the number one. The trick here is to push the button, uh, to push the number of a floor other than this one. Otherwise, it's no fun. Well, fucking, I figure, all right, never mind. You people get where I, where I was coming from. Uh, push three. Level one. Level two. Level three. Okay. Here I am. You have the funny feeling you're being watched. Well, shit. Look. This section of hall dead ends. There is an elevator on the back wall and a camera attached to the ceiling. Okay. Uh, look. Camera? There is a surveillance camera mounted on the ceiling. It looks to be quite basic. It appears to be pointing right at you. Ooh. Yeah, maybe it's, mmm. That is an old school camera too. It's quite funny. For anyone who, uh, oh God, gonna sneeze. Gonna sneeze. Ah, oh. I went to a Bowcraft amusement park, um, like a year and a half ago with my buddy Adam. That was like my childhood, like hangout park and it hasn't been touched in forever and it had one of those old school cameras you can check it out in an old posting on my instagram <laughs> D am i gonna be a dick and pimp my own instagram on this show you better believe it i'm at danny underscore underscore avidan a-v-i-d-a-n find me on instagram and send me boobs doesn't matter if they're your boobs just any boobs will do okay so look you are in a tubular hallway there is a door on the side wall Push button. Okay. Aha! You know a janitorial closet when you smell one. Almost at once, you sense an emptiness, a melancholy longing. You begin to feel homesick. Aw. Uh, look, room. <laughs> it's quite dark in here. You do find a plunger, however. Oh, well, fucking take the plunger, baby. Not the plunger, but the plunger. Okay. Got me a plunger. Yeah. I'm gonna save it. Boom. Okay. Cause uh I can't remember what's on certain parts of this ship, and you can definitely fucking die. Uh look windows. <laughs> All you can see are billions and billions of stars. Aw, oh, nice little Carl Sagan reference. I like that. Okay, so I'm just strutting along. This ship is Pretty freaking massive. Um, look. No breakthroughs in interior design to report. <laughs> it's just one of those many tube-like sections of this custom asteroid. Okay. Thought that wall might have some kind of thing going on there, but I guess not. It kind of looked like doors you could open or something like that. Ah, oh, I suppose that was it for this level. All right, well... Time to head down just a wee bit further. Uh, I'll push four. <laughs> Let's see what, what joys await us down in four. 
Boy, that camera. Oh, I love it. I love the way it creeps me the fuck out and gives me an impending sense of doom and death. So great. That scared the shit out of me. Look. No, uh, look. Robot. Oh. Okay, look, robot. <laughs> Is that thing gonna follow me here? Yeah. There's an automated floor waxer moving down the corridor. The name plaque reads the Daildo Buff Master, or the Delito must, I don't know, Buff Master. Another fine product from Helmet Master Enterprises. Oh, Helmet Master might be a dick reference that I did not pick up on as a child. All right, so let me let that thing cruise by me and then go. And I mean, this thing will be after me, but I can cruise. Look, look at the look at the speed at which I walk, powerfully. So much determination, arms a swinging. It's the best. <laughs> oh, I forgot the. I forgot. Oh wait. Oh, there's a men's room and a ladies' room. Uh, push button. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Okay. Woof! Finally made it to the bathroom. <laughs> I love the different looking alien feet in the stalls. You have stepped into a porcelain palace of sorts. It is obviously a restroom, a place which, in an interesting fashion, serves to exhibit the physical diversity of the universe. The walls are covered in an easy-to-hose-down synthetic material. Attached to them in, in various locations are devices designed to efficiently collect waste products from the life forms which are able to physically match up to them. On the back wall are stalls. Three of them in, are in use, judging by the various feet which show beneath the stall doors. To the left are sinks. Okay. Um, let's see. Look. Stall. This one looks like a quad-port high-performance urinal manifold, especially useful for those multitudinously equipped. Also used in a pinch by up to four single-digit beings when the, pa <laughs> when the place is really packed. Um, into it. Uh, look, mirror. Darn, another pimple. Aw. Wash hands. The faucets aren't operational. Vohal didn't seem big on personal hygiene. Oh, well. Uh, let's see here. Open door. Uh, close door. Sit. Okay. Oh, look at this. Drop in the deuce. You slide your uniform pants down and settle onto the cool ring. You go through whatever motions might be normal for you during this act. Refreshed, you grab your pants and compose yourself. Uh, flush? Why? No one else has. And it would probably be risky to attempt without a flotation device handy. Well, okay. Uh, take toilet paper. How about that? Yeah, there we go. Look, stall. The inside of the stall is a sight to behold. There is writing of various languages etched on the walls. The floor has an interesting coating of some type of congealed dreck. It appears that the toilet may have been white once. A toilet paper dispenser hangs on one wall. Uh, look, wall. <laughs> the grimy wall has writing on it. Read. Writing. The writing etched on the wall is in various languages. One large message reads, Volhall's mother wears stellar patrol boots. Well. Uh, one large message reads, Volhall plays text adventures. Oh, shit. Text adventures were, uh, one rung down from this, you know, at the time. So they're just talking shit. The writing etched on the wall reads, okay, Vohal's mother again. Okay. I feel like there must be another. Oh. One mar large message reads, Sir Graham cross dresses. Ah. Oh. <laughs> the sound comes from one of the occupied stalls, you think. Suddenly, one of your senses downloads an extremely negative air quality report. For some reason, the name John springs to mind. Damn. Um. Ken was here. So was Al, but... We had to repaint afterwards. Okay, great. They're they're making in jokes about Ken Williams and Al Lowe, creator of Leisure Suit Larry. Wait, let me try to get one more. Ah, 
came in here to unleash a beast just to find my colon creased. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Okay, so let's open the door and get out of here. Let's check out this, uh, this turlet back here. This one is interesting. It has a bi-level arrangement with, with an upper opening chin height on, about, oh, with the upper opening about chin height on you. You might be careful about getting too close. Hopefully, you'll not run into the being this fits. Yeah, actually, yeah, definitely. Not looking for that too dicked situation. Oh, is this the entrance to the ladies' room over here? That's really funny. They're the same goddamn room. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. But I got the toilet paper, which I believe was my one goal there. Oh, so now I must push, get ready to push this button before this thing flattens me. Oh, oh, nope, there it is. Search room. That does not compute. Look, it's quite dark in here. On the floor, you notice a glass cutter. Take glass cutter. Okay, now I'm behind this thing. I wonder if it will let me, I'm just gonna get this ready just in case. Um, cool. Maybe it won't come back. That would make me very happy. Because otherwise I'll have to run all the way back into the glass cutter closet. Yay! Okay, sweet. In that case, I'll save. Because we made it through the chamber of a thousand toots. To, to, ah, oh, dang. Oh, well, so close. Um, all right. Push five. All right, we're cruising right along, heading down to the very basement of this ship. So intense. God knows what horrifying monstrosities they have down here. Wonder why I couldn't get to level two. Maybe that's also on the, oh dear. Look. The hallways on this level are the same as above, with the exception of some type of cages. An occasional strange noise is heard. The smell here is stifling. Apparently the holding cells are not well kept. Okay, look, cage. As is common in all periods of cage design, vertical bars of sturdy nature dominate the appearance. They look quite impenetrable. One of them has some fur wrapped around a couple sections of bar. Well, let's see. Youch! You feel alarmingly dense! Apparently, you were a prime focal point for some aggression channeling by one of the caged creatures. Your compressed composition indicates that your attacker possesses considerable strength, a good guy to avoid in the future. Of course, you are damaged beyond repair and the game must end. You've made quite a bit of progress, though. Don't start screwing up now. Okay. Maybe I won't. Thanks for playing. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay, so back we are here again. Um, push five. Okay, so I believe that everything that is and comes out of those cages, excuse me, will kill me. Um, so I'm just gonna scoot on past that section as quickly as possible. Oh, I do remember what happens here. Okay, so... This, uh, this secondary cage, I don't think anything's in there, but I believe, is there another row of cages? Yes. Oh, fuck dicks. Okay. Oh no. One of the cells is opening. Who knows what unspeakable horror waits behind those steel bars? All right. I'm just going to try to outrun this thing. Basically, it's a fucking alien, but with big kissy lips. Um... And I did not know, uh, I did not get that joke. Oh, push button. Um. Uh. Oh, it comes right in there? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, well, you can't really see it, but it kisses me. Oh, yuck. The dark and spiny beast with massive red lips grabs you up and after a longing glance proceeds 
Don't read further if the phrase French kiss bothers you. To plant a very moist French kiss on you, you are left quite stunned. Okay, so... I thought that was no big deal because I hadn't seen Alien the first time I played this. But basically now I'm fucked. Uh, I will play the game for like 20 minutes or whatever, and then an alien explodes out of me. Um, so rather than do that, I'm just going to friggin' restore. And uh, I'm going to go back to the Chamber of Thousand Toots. And you know what? I'm going to go this way and come at that uh, door from the other side. And that way I will avoid that alien altogether. Um, although I, I, I do think that's a cute thing that they threw in there. It's definitely one of the things I thought about when I thought about Space Quest 2. I was like, oh yeah, the one with the kissy alien. There was like, there's just something funny about it that stood out. Um, probably because it's so insane and so dumb. Um, kind of reminds me of Spaceballs, if anyone has seen that, where... They have that alien scene where they get John Hurt, the guy from the original Alien movie. Um, he eats bad food at a space diner, and then an alien explodes out of his chest. And he's like, oh no, not again. <laughs> it's really fucking funny. Um, and then the little alien does like a little, hello my baby, hello my honey. You probably have to look it up online for that to make sense. But, uh... Also, I saw that Spaceballs movie before I saw Alien. So that was my first exposure to anything um, related to Alien. And as a result, I left the theater in Spaceballs when, when I was like eight years old when we saw that. I left the theater like very upset. It wasn't like a comedy to me at all because like the thing that stuck with me the most was the fucking Alien. So scary. Um, and they don't kill it. It just gets away. Ugh. Now I think it's friggin' hilarious. Um, okay, let me get the push button thing all set. And then I should be pretty much good to go, I think. Um, let's see here. Okay, look. Uh, it is quite dark in here. There is a small wastebasket. On the floor next to it is a pair of crusty work overalls. Take basket. Okay. Aren't you amazed by how much stuff an adventure game hero can carry? You just gotta know how to pack. That's the truth. And take overalls. You pick up the overalls. They are very small and quite worn out, not to mention filthy, and of no use to you. You toss them back on the floor. As you set them down, something falls to the floor. Look, floor. Whoops. You see some filthy f overalls and a lighter. Ah, take lighter. Okay. Um, great. So let's save this. Cool. I feel good about what we're doing here. There's no immediate threat, but in Sierra games, as I'm sure I've said before, it can be kind of dangerous to like, just keep saving over the most recent save file because it certainly is very possible to save in such a way that like you save right before you're going to die and then that save file is totally useless and you're like screwed forever. Oh, what fun. I can't get enough of the pain. Um, okay, so back to floor one, I believe. Four. Three. Two, take my word for it, and one. Okay. Oop, don't want to fall to my death on this thing because that is definitely on the menu. That can certainly happen. Okay, so the reason I went left and right first is because if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, I face a conundrum. I'm going to save one more time. Um, if I go this way, it gets a little tricky. Um, yes. The door behind you closes solidly. Yeah, barrier springs up before you. Um, and another barrier stands in your way. Okay. You feel the floor shift below you. It's moving to the left. 
Um, that's not good. Ah, hmm, dicks. Look, floor. The floor is moving. Beneath it is what you guess to be a pool of highly lethal liquid. Oh, Sledge of Ohal, you dickbag. So the trick here is to use the plunger on the wall. But you don't want to use it too quickly because you only have so much arm strength because of your weak janitorial custodial body frame. Um, so you want to let it get like pretty close to your feetsies and... Oh, crap. Use a plunger. Ah! Oh, dick. Um, hmm, how do I want to phrase this? Let me just check this real quick. Uh, ba 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 da da. Um, wait for it. Oh, okay. Yeesh. Um, can I do this in time? Stick plunger on wall. Oh, whoo! Ooh, that was very close. Using formerly uncharacteristic creativity, you apply the suction cup-like plunger to the smooth metal finish and hang on for dear life. Once a janitor, always a janitor. Boom, baby. Oh, that's a tough way to go. That's into the acid pool. Okay. Whew. Uh. Get down. Uh, remove plunger. From wall. Okay. Uh, hmm. Release grip, perhaps? Okay. You release your grip and drop back down. Okay, so the plunger's gone, but what the fuck ever? Let's save that, because that worked. Okay. <sighs> now what? You are in an attractive tube-shaped region of the asteroid. Well, it is quite lovely, I must say. Uh, fuck. Uh, look. What is that? This section of the corridor is aligned with wall bots. There is a door to the right. Oh, shit balls. Um. Okay. Uh, is that wall bot still following me? <laughs> yes, it is. How marvelous. Um. Hopefully. There's nothing going on over here. Oh, more wall bots. Marvelous. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm gonna see if there's a way. Okay. If you won't follow me here, maybe I can do something. Nope. Okay, they just, they just fucking show up. Great. Um. Hmm. Let's try this again. Because I know what I have to do. Uh. All right. Look. Ceiling. The ceiling looks ordinary, except for some fixtures that look like sprinklers. Okay, so here's what I got to do. I've got to put down the wastebasket. Um, okay. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to do this fast. Okay, so put toilet paper in basket. Okay. Put basket on floor. There it is. Uh, and use the lighter on the toilet paper. Okay. Light paper on fire. There you go, baby. That took a long time to figure out. Um, but there's those lovely sprinkling system situations happening. While receiving a nice hosing yourself, the basket fire is extinguished. Seconds later, a loud series of pops is followed by the smell of fried electronics. Mmm, fried electronics. Take up oh, the sprinkler sense accomplishment and cease operation. Take basket. It's of no use to you now. Well, fuck it then. I'll leave it right there. Someone else can clean that shit up. 
Your fire and subsequent shower seems to have shorted out the burnished pulleys. Look, wallbots. The huge metal menaces are specifically designed to secure a given area. When not busy, they are plunged into the wall. They are plugged into the wall, excuse me, recharging. Imagine what the kneecaps would cost for those puppies. I do not understand that reference, but that's okay. Uh, I'll look it up later. Okay, let's see what's in here. No oh, shit! You have just entered Vohal's secret chamber. The evil one himself is seated before a large console high on a platform in the center of the room. Standing obliviously ready are many of the dreaded salesman clones. That is the most absurd take over the world scheme I've ever heard, and I friggin' love it. Ah, he spotted me. Is, is this guy orange or blue? He needs to decide. So, so Danny, we meet again. I must say I'm quite impressed with your resourcefulness and tenacity. I'd love to chat, but I'm busy preparing the, the last of my salesman clones for their trip to Xenon. Feel free to stick around and observe the downfall of your civilization. Ha! Comma. Ha! Comma. Ha! Exclamation point. Close quote. Okay, I'm gonna save it here. Fuck this guy all blue and orange. Fuck. Okay. Um. I'll stop you, sludge. But first, I'll look at the salesman. Look. Salesman. These guys are your worst nightmare come true. Imagine hundreds of John Davidsons in magnetically hazardous polyester, polyester suits, the color alone capable of rendering helpless the infirm. Topped with permabound hair, the face splashed with that let me win you over smile. He's a master guiltsmith, programmed with one intent sell, sell, sell! Each are encased in pre programmed impervious transport capsules. Ah, oh, that is a bad scene, man. All right, time to face Sludge Vohall. Look, Sludge. I don't understand. Going somewhere? Ha ha ha. Oh, is that bad? Oh, well. Well, shit. Isn't this just a big old bunch of dicks? As soon as you step on the platform, you are struck by a beam of light emitted from a unit in the ceiling. In a matter of seconds, you are broken down into microparticles and extracted from the air. Shit. Well. Fuck. Oh, he just had that? He just had a shrinking ray? Just at the ready? Whatever. Again, the beam strikes, this time blasting into a glass jar on the console. It is there that you are molecularly reconstructed in a miniaturized form. Hell yeah. Love it. Well, I'll be darned. Well, I'll be darned. My miniaturization beam does work, Vohal's voice booms. In the old days, I'd test these things on myself. But as you may have noticed, my appearance, being my old guinea pig, has had its vinid... Oh, I'm trying that again. But as you may have noticed by my appearance, being my own guinea pig has had its disadvantages. I guess this will keep you out of my way once and for all. You'll make a nice conversation piece. With that, Vohal turns away to put finishing touches on Xenon's fate. Hmm. Well. Push glass? Okay. Well, it just so happens that I got a fucking glass cutter. So, yes. Hell yes. Boom. Tink. The newly cut pane of glass falls to the counter. Apparently, Vohal doesn't notice. Excellent. Let's save real quick. Okay. All right. So now, I just have to fucking sneak around in his control panel and wreak some fucking havoc. Because I'm pretty sure if I type... Some, <laughs> okay! <laughs> Darn, Danny. I guess his lardness got a little fed up with your meddling. You've been redesigned once again, revealing a permanent overhead view. You resemble one of those wonderfully colorful mosaics commonly found on windshields. Boy, that is... For just a bunch of pixels, that is pretty violent looking. It has been a pleasure watching you play Space Quest 2. I am a little pile. 
of goo. All right, restore the game. Okay, cool. All right, so noted, I can't go that far. Uh, look. You are on the surface of a console. A large, compared to you, jar sits in the middle. A hole has been cut near the side, in the side. There's some vents near the back. Ah. Perhaps I can climb in vent? Yes! You wiggle your slim carcass through the vent. Caution. Look. Judging from those two hoses coming in from the outside, you guess that this is the inner workings of Vohal's life support system. A respirator pumps oxygen into his lungs, while a pump on the back wall forces blood through filters. There is also a sign on the back wall. Read sign. The sign says, caution, press button for emergency shutoff. Ah, I love that a life support system has an emergency shutoff button. Push button. Yeah, suck it, dude. Way to go, Danny! You've just disconnected Vohal's life support system. He's a goner without it. Yes! Climb. Out. Vent. You can see Vohal struggling to take his last few breaths. Not you again, you think. You have won. Oh, jeez, sorry. Not you again! You think you have won, he wheezes, but all you have done is to seal your own fate. He reaches up and flips a switch on the far end of the console before dropping to the floor, dead. Oh man, I wish I could have seen that. But that's okay. His ass is dead, and that's what really matters. Um, let's walk up on over here. Cool, I'm not typing anything yet. Um, look. You are walking on another section of the control console. There is a large switch on the back panel. A keyboard is at your feet. Pull. Switch. Reduce or enlarge. Enlarge, please. Type the word you want. Well, I'll do that. Type. Enlarge. <laughs> Aw. Good thing I'm a master jumper. Up, oh, the enlarging sequence has begun. I guess it's going back in the um in the little glass case. Yep, there it is. Oh, I wonder if I'm gonna get fucking squished enlarging out of this thing. Maybe it'll just explode because there's so much man in me. Yes. Oh no, it's gonna move me. Cool. Hooray! Oh, that is one dead Vohal. Fantastic. I did it! You are once again reconstituted. This time, this time to the correct size. You notice that the clones are gone. Oh shit, he sent them. Um, okay. Uh, look, Vohal. Vohal's dead, hulking slab of flesh is loosely arranged at the base of the chair. Um, search, chair. That does not compute. Look, chair. It looks like a darn nice chair. However, there does seem to be a distinct outline where Vohal's bloated bulk, bulk once nestled. Uh, look, body. Um, search, body. An examination of his repulsively turgid fabric-encased mass reveals nothing other than the tubes which supplied him with the blood and oxygen. With blood and oxygen. You do notice the letters SHSR written in pen on the back of his left hand. Oh, well, that monitor's doing something, so let's look at the panel. Look, monitor. Um, okay, launch countdown. Uh, prognosis terminal. That's not good for him. External temperature critical. Probably not good for me. Uh, launch, clone launch go. To abort launch, enter code below. Um, SHSR. Aborted. Abort granted. Yes. Nice. F6, baby. Uh, time to save. Um, fuck this guy all blue and orange fuck. Cool. Um, and let's get the hell out of here. L uh, look, jar. There's no sense in messing with that now. It will not prolong your survival. Uh, look, window. 
Through, through the massive window, you can see out into the depths of space, towards distant systems. So many other places out there to be. But here you are. Dude, I know the feel. Oh, 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 these stairs are a little, stairs are a little, uh, 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 uh. okay, Whew. that was awkward, um, look, this is a cool part of the game, I like this, you are walking through a clear tubular passageway, which seems to wind in and out along the outer perimeter of the asteroid, there is a box mounted on the west end of this tube, okay, look, box, the box is actually an oxygen mask receptacle. It is currently closed. Open box. You open the box and noticing an oxygen mask, remove it and close the box. Put on mask. All right. I'm sure that will come in handy. Um, 40 minutes until meltdown, a synthesized voice cheerfully announces. Great. Oh, cool. So I'll end up killing that stupid alien when this place melts down. That makes me feel good. Um, and that big furry gorilla thing which killed me. Fuck him. I hate him. Ooh, this is pretty. You are walking through a clear tubular passageway which seems to wind in and out. Okay. Uh, the planet of Labion spins nearby. Oh, there's Labion. Okay. You can see evidence of the decaying orbit of the asteroid. The exterior of the asteroid is heating up from ever-increasing collisions with the atmospheric molecules. The glass tubes will not bear this heat much longer. Um, oh, I gotta do this awkward diagonal walk here. I hadn't quite gotten that down yet. I think I'm there. Cool. Look, space. It looks darn cold and lonely out there. You can only wonder how far you are from home, or if you will ever see it again. Oh, that's sad. Hey, oh! A section of the glass tubing has fractured from combined stress. The pressurized atmosphere rushes for the relative vacuum of space. Fortunately, wearing the mask protects you from suffocation. See? Probably would have died there. Cool! Look at me, just strutting, strutting all healthy-like. No longer needing the mask, you remove it and stow it for later. Mmm, things look good in here. It's just another section of hall. There is a door on the back wall. Okay, let me save this. Okay. Running for my life. Cool. Oh shit, is this good? I think this is the way I'm supposed to go. Time is very much of the essence now. I don't know, um, I don't know how long 40 minutes quote unquote is in actual game time. Probably not that. Um, oh, I'm here. Okay. So I just gotta cross this panel. Oh, this makes sense. Cool. Kinda cool that they do this to to let you see the entire layout of the ship and then slowly let you get to experience um, every path you can go on it. I always like the way they set up uh, things in Space Quest games. I thought it was very clever. Very clever and friendly and it made me feel gifted. Gifted, I say! Um, so now I just gotta get in here. Pumpty tum ti tum I also like that, regardless of the situation, Roger Wilco always walks at a nice, leisurely pace. No need to stress, bro. It's just death in the vacuum of space at risk. Okay, don't mind me, don't mind me. Yeah, fucking watch me all you want, dude. The guy who's checking those security cameras dead. Soup's dead, brah. Um, okay. So there is something here that I cannot recall. It's very, this is like the final escape. I just have to figure out what the heck to do here. Okay, look. You are somewhere. Marvelous. Look, wall. The walls are covered with panels protecting sensitive technical environment control components. They're nothing to mess with. Um. Okay. 
still think there's something there. Though I cannot, for the life of me, remember what it is. This, these sounds are very relaxing. This really helps me concentrate. It's awesome. Oh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, look. You are in the section of a hallway on the back wall is a bank of four escape pods. Is that thing gonna chase me? If it is, I've... God dang it. Um... Uh... How far will this thing chase me? Alright, let me see, hold on. As, as this thing struts behind me, since it's clearly not gonna catch me, I'm just gonna check. Um... One more time. Uh, the walk. The, the walk through. La -da 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 -da. Okay. Oh. Okay. Is this thing... 35 minutes until meltdown. Great. Okay. Oh, so I just have to get in that pod as fast as possible. Um, yeesh. Let's see. Um, how do I do that? Uh, open box, wear a mask, blah, blah, blah. Keep walking through the town. Sorry, everyone. Just one moment. Figuring this out. Making it happen. Okay, here we are. Um... We're back. So, I have to say push button and, um, before, okay. Whew, boy, this is gonna be tricky. Um, I just basically have to do this crazy fast. Okay, and enter pod. Ah! The robot has apparently decided that it's permissible for you to be here since you are all in the pod already. Whew, that was close. Ugh, oh, scary shit. Okay, uh, look, pod. Upon entering the escape pod, you quickly take your seat. Uh, look, pod. You are seated inside one of the emergency escape vehicles. Before you lies a control panel and a viewport. Look, panel. The only outstanding feature on the panel is the clearly marked launch button. Well, then I'll fucking go ahead and push the launch button, baby. You better believe that shit. Warning, emergency escape vehicle launch sequence has begun. Get me the fuck out of here! Uh, uh. Launch time, T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero, baby! <laughs> yeah! I have made it! Phew! You're gonna have to stop cutting these escapes so close, Danny. You're telling me, Space Quest 2. Well, you must feel pretty good right now. You stopped Vohal from carrying out his threat of salesman infestation, ultimately destroying the twisted scientist himself. You also managed to save your own skin. And just look at that score. Pretty darn impressive. Yeah, man, I lost 11 points somehow. I don't know. Well. Oh. What's up? Suddenly, a warning signal draws your attention to the oxygen meter on the front panel. It reads low and dropping fast. Oh, fucking great. This is just great. Yeah, I agree, Space Quest. You knew it was all too good to be true. You have maybe five minutes of air left. Well, Danny, it was nice knowing you. Oh, shit, dicks. All right, look. Now you take the time to view the interior of the pod in, a, in more detail. You see a sleep chamber against one wall. Um... Look. Chamber. Uh. Look. Sleep chamber. The chamber is a bed of sorts, enclosed in a large plexiglass cylinder. The occupant of such a chamber would be placed in suspended animation and kept alive for an indefinite period of time. Well, better fucking get in there. Then in chamber. You need to open the chamber. <laughs> Girl, that chamber is getting opened as fuck. You turn back the plexiglass cover. Get in Chambel. You make the split-second decision to enter the sleep chamber. It seals automatically. 
Soon, you are overcome by a pleasant drowsiness. This is certainly better than suffocating. You begin to drift away into a deep sleep with the satisfaction of having accomplished your task. You've come through in the clutch, and you deserve a nice long rest. Now, if someone would just pick you up somewhere along the way. So long, Danny, and thanks again for saving your people. Thanks for playing Space Quest 2. So that's the end of Space Quest 2. Aw, oh, dicks, I, I missed a point. 249 to 250. Arg! What did I miss? Oh well. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a cliffhanger for them to end this on. Strange, strange ending. It's probably the strangest ending of all the games. Um, but as you know, Space Quest 3, you can now go to that and pick it up, um, where I started the, um, my playthrough of that for Grumps, and you'll see I get sucked into that junk freighter, and I wake up. I'm all like, where am I? And then I tumble out, and I, I steal a ship, and I get beaten up by rats, and then I go to the McDonald's in space, known as Monolith Burger. But that's for another day, my friends. Uh, in the meantime, we have filled in the little gap now, and we have played, we have officially played Space Quests 1, 2, and 3 on Grumps, and Space Quest 4 on Steam Train with Ross. So, um, I'm not a massive fan of Space Quest 6, but I would love to play Space Quest 5, um, when the time is right. I'll probably play that one with Aaron because it's a little bit more in-depth. It definitely can't be accomplished in, you know two or three hours like these early games can. Um, but I bet we could do it in a couple long episodes, which would be really fun for me. Um, so perhaps we'll do that. Um, and in the meantime, uh, thank you for watching all the way through this video. Uh, you must be a super fan because we just spent a couple hours together. Like, holy shit. Really, it's really enjoyable for me to, to share these, these Sierra games uh, with you guys. And yeah, as always, thank you to um, Scott Murphy and Mark Crow for making these incredible games. Uh, this game is 30 years old now, Space Quest II, and it remains fun and interesting and uh, just so insanely far ahead of its time um, that uh, it will always have my respect and my love. And those guys are actually still working on. Um, they're a game called Space Venture, uh, which they had a Kickstarter for, I guess, a few years back, and, uh, it's taken them a bit longer than they anticipated, uh, to get it out there, but I have faith that they'll get it out there, um, pretty soon, and it'll be awesome, and then I'll play that on the show, because th that I really can't wait for. I've been waiting for a new game from those guys for, like, 20 years now. Um, but in any case... Thank you so much. Uh, I love you, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for more Game Grumps hijinks. Uh, this is Danny, signing off. Bye. Okay, Matt and Ryan, I did it. I fucking did it. I played Space Quest 2. There's nobody else here. Who am I even talking to right now?